Hi, I'm Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. Today I want to share with you a really fun project. This is a little periwinkle table topper or mug rug and I actually first made them as snowflakes or stars to hang in the window at Christmas time. They were just beautiful. I made some in all white and some in white and red and I mean they were just really pretty Christmas ornaments. But guess what? It's the 4th of July and I needed something for my table and I needed it fast. We love to decorate for the 4th of July but all of a sudden it's here. So this is something you can do really quick and still have on your table by the 4th of July. So what we're going to do is we're going to make these same little table toppers, but we're going to make them out of red, white, and blue. And they make perfect little mug rugs. They also make a perfect little centerpiece if you have a little, little pot of flowers or if you have a candle or something you want to put on them. And you put three or four of those on your table and you're going to have a darling little table centerpiece. It's just going to be beautiful. So to make these, you're going to need the periwinkle temple template and we have several different um, charm packs and layer cakes of 4th of July fabrics. This is a great scrap project but if you need something specifically that uh, screams red, white, and blue, we have those available for you as well. So what I did was I took some of these Wyndham, Wyndham American Basics and I cut the periwinkle shape. Now let me show you how I did that so you can see I have a little, little scrap here and you're just going to line up your periwinkle and cut it out. Um, and so here's what I did. I cut around here like this. And then I just cut up this side. And you're going to need six of these. So I think I made through, there we go, one more little spot. Oh, one more little spot again. <laughs> there we go. I got it this time. So here's our little shape that we're going to make. And again, you're going to need six of those. So I have six cut out right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to lay these out and we're going to sew them together in threes. So I have two sewn together right here and I'm going to add one more to that. And I'm going to sew this section together. Then I'm going to take three more and one of these. Maybe I'll do this way. Put a red and a blue and a red. There we go. Just like that. So first let's sew the top three. Now I've already sewn two. You just lay them together. You match this point right here and this point down here. And you're just going to sew these together. Now I'm just going to put this aside until I sew the other three together over here and we're going to do that right now. It doesn't matter if you start from the top or the bottom. We're just going to sew a quarter of an inch like this and then one more on there right on this side. Line up your sides and just sew straight down. Move this a little bit so you can see this a little better. Okay, so now I'm going to press these and then we are going to put the two halves together. So I'm just going to press these. I like to sew, press flat from the top and then go on the back and then make my seams go the way I want to. So we're pressing flat on the top, flip it over, and those are pretty good. So then what we're going to do is we're going to lay these two halves together like this matching up the middle and matching up the edges. So I'm going to match up this edge. I'm going to take a few stitches to anchor it and then I'm going to check my middle alignment. What you want to line up is the two middle where the two little peaks come together. That's what you want to line up. There you go. And then I'm going to line up the end point as well. There we go. And now we're going to iron this open. If you find you have too much bulk on that middle seam, you can, um, you can just iron that seam open. Usually it lays down pretty nice like this. And this is the top. So in just that few seconds, you've finished the top. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take some fusible fleece and we're going to lay this 
this is going to become our pattern. We're going to lay this on our fusible feet, excuse me, fusible fleece. We're going to lay this on our fusible fleece and we're going to press it on there. We're going to trim it out and press it. So I'm going to go ahead and press this right now. And get that to adhere to that. This is going to be our batting that gives it just a little bit of oomph, but not, you know, it's not really terribly thick, so you can still set something. So now what we need to do is we need a back for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece right here, and I'm going to lay my star on here, and I'm just going to kind of roughly cut this out so I don't have too much bulk. And then I'm just going to come over here and cut this little bit over here. I'm not cutting it out exactly because I will do that after I sew it down. You can cut it out exactly. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just in a hurry to get it done. So I want to have a little fold in that fabric right there so I want it nice and straight. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay this on here and I'm going to sew around it. I'm, um, it. If you want to, you can put a pin in these sections to keep it in place. But I'm just going to lay this under here and sew around. Now I'm going to start from a peak, but on one of these, on the very last section, I'm going to, to stop and leave about a three inch opening. So we're just going to sew all the way around. And I'm going to go ahead and rotate this around. I kind of stop, I can see the seam right when I'm sewing. I can see the seam and I stop when I get to that. So when you go to put this together, remember that the right sides go together. So the top of your quilt is going against the top of the back. And, um, and it's going to look like this. You're going to have these two, the right sides together. And we're going to sew that down. So your batting will actually be on top like you can see mine is. And that will help it so that um, when you turn it, it's, it's just going to be perfect. All right, now I'm coming around this corner. And I have to keep checking because I don't want to sew it completely closed or I won't ever get it turned. <laughs> All right, so now I have, I have one little seam left to sew. And I'm just going to sew a couple of stitches because I want to get out of that corner and I'm going to back stitch. And then I'm going to lift this up and I'm going to come forward and I'm just going to sew right up here in the corner because I don't want to have to mess with these corners when I get ready to sew them down. So I'm going to sew this down, just back stitch a little. And now what I like to do is just trim it out. And when I trim, I clip off, here let me show you this right here. When I trim I like to clip off these corners right here so I have less bulk. And so here's another corner so I'm just going to kind of clip that off straight and clip a little bit on the sides so I have less bulk. And that's actually the reason I wait to cut my uh, background out is because I'm cutting again anyway and so I want to make sure that, I mean, I don't want to have to cut it twice, but you can do it either way. You can trace it on there and cut it and do it just however you like to do it. And I like to come in and just kind of clip that all the way around so that it's just a little less bulk in there. There we go. And now comes the fun part. Now we get to turn it. So we're going to look over here. I want to show you where my, my uh, sewing place, my opening is. Right here, you can see I, I have sewn in here and in here and nothing in between here. So that's where we're going to turn it from. So this is actually right here. We're going to just pull that opening back and push the inside through. And this just takes a little bit of patience. And once it starts to go, it just goes. So let's just kind of keep pushing that in there. And then you can pull it out from the top as well. And this is why you backstitch because you don't want those little pieces to come apart because it's, it is a lot of fabric through a little space. So now I've got my finger in here and I'm going to kind of push it, push it around and push out the points as I come to them. 
one of the easy things about this is that it is not, um, they're not really sharp, sharp points. So uh, it's, not, it's not so crucial how those come out. You can see that it's coming though. Let me get this point out here. If you have any point that you feel like doesn't really come through all the way, I just put the tip of a scissor in there or a, a pen and just give it a little push like this. And this one right here, don't forget this little one we sewed down so we didn't have to mess with it. And then over here, make sure all these are pushed out. And then what I do is I iron it. And one of the things when I iron, let me move this out of the way so I've got some room to show you. One of the things I like to do when I iron is this piece right here that we pulled all that fabric through. I want to turn that under just like this so that it lays down nice and flat. Because if I, if I can get this to line up nice and flat, I don't even have to hand sew this. I can just sew it as I go around. So that looks like it's going to close pretty nice. I'm going to put my iron on here and just go ahead and iron this. And you can see how cute this is just like this. But we're going to machine quilt it. And let me show you how easy this is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start right here on one of these lines. And I want to make sure you can see this. So I'm going to really, really clear up a view for you. And I'm going to sew straight across to the other side like this. And I'm going to stop a quarter of an inch from my edge and I'm going to turn it and go across the edge, the point. Stop just a quarter of an inch from the point, come down the other side, stop a quarter of an inch from that seam, or so, <laughs> a quarter of an inch or so, and then I'm going to go straight across that middle again and up the other side, and I'm going to keep doing this all the way around. So here I come across here, and I, you, just, you can just kind of sl slow down when you get to that, that first uh, point right there. I slow down a little bit, turn, and I'm going to go straight across again. There we go. Needle down. Pivot. Needle down, one more stitch, and pivot. And now I'm back to where my stitching started, but I have three more that aren't done, so I'm going to hop over to the other side, and I'm going to start down that side. All right, so now I'm right to my last stitch. And in just that quick of time, let me clip these threads. We have a darling little table topper that is just a perfect little decoration for our table for the 4th of July. From the time I was a little girl, 4th of July was a really important holiday. My mother's parents came from Sweden and they taught her the values of how important America was. And we loved to celebrate this day. We hung up flags, we put up banners, we had wonderful food, we were part of parades, and we loved to lay on our backs at the end of the day and watch the, the fireworks overhead. It was just such a wonderful time in our lives. It is seeped with tradition and still goes on in my family today. So we hope you have a wonderful 4th of July and we hope you enjoy this tutorial from the Missouri Star Quilt Company.